Boom. Good. Thank you to the audience listening in and the viewers viewing in and the people feeling in and whatever. Um, I've managed to get together a group of highly qualified ladies, all excellent instructors in South Africa. Um, and we will do a panel discussion today on self-defense, specifically out of the viewpoint of females, um, just to, to discuss a couple of opinions and, and whatnots and whatnot. So uh, I'm going to start off and... Kelly, if you don't mind, I'm just going to ask each lady to just do a short introduction of each of, of themselves. So Kelly, if you don't mind starting, I'm handing over to you just a short introduction, who you are and your company and so forth, please. Sure. My name is Kelly Aerosmith. Um, company is Act Personal Safety. And I teach a holistic view on safety. I know holistic is kind of overused. Uh, but maybe a different view on safety uh, to what most people do. Most of my customers are corporate customers. Um, yeah, but at every facet of safety, if you would. I focus on strategy and policies and procedures, but firearms, blade. Uh, blade is probably my favorite. Uh, my hubby and I brought the blade to South Africa. It was unheard of. We brought it back, uh, to South Africa about 22 years ago and everybody thought we were mad and now it's quite mainstream. That's me. Thanks, Kelly. Ivana, can I go over to you, please? Um, well, first of all, good morning to all the audience watching this or afternoon or whatever time you're watching this. Um, I run a, an organization called Storm Combat and it basically uh, focuses on incorporating three different combat systems, Israeli Krav Maga, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and Filipino martial arts. Um, I'm also a firearms instructor. My main focus, strangely enough, as a woman, um, although I, I teach women in my classes, 80% of my clients are actually male for some reason. Um, and I also teach police, CPOs, um, CPFs, security, etc. So that's really me. Okay, thank you. Doreen, over to you. Hi. Hi, good morning, everyone. This is not my full time job, but this is my passion. If I can teach one lady to handle her gun in a matter that can save her life, then I'm happy. Then I know my passion is there. Then I know I have saved a life. I am a firearms instructor, but I'm also a sport shooter. Um, I do not teach these classes full time, but the basics of my company is shewolfdefense.com and I do basic firearms handling and training. So the lady who comes in there, she doesn't know which firearm to choose, which holster, uh, you know, the usual 38 special that my husband said I must use. We really, really like to debunk that myth that a woman cannot handle anything else at the 38 special. So that's what I'm doing. The basics of firearms instruction to use your gun, not just to keep it in the safe, but to have it on you all the time. That's my passion. And that's what I teach the ladies in my um, farming community. Great. Thank you. Elmarie. Good morning. Um, Elmarie Jones. Um, um, I'm also a self-defense instructor. Um, my company is Smart Defense SA. We also work with a lot of people, farming community, with females. We work on a lot of facets of self-defense, of firearm handling, and we cover a lot of ground on awareness, mindset, all the important things that we need to especially teach our women to be able to defend themselves. Good. Thank you. Tell Marie. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome here and thank you for watching. So I also do the, the core beginners and um, I would like to inspire the women to get out there and to arm themselves 
whichever weapon they choose and it's comfortable for them and they can handle. And then we go through everything from the basic basics. And then we would love to, to help them together with their husbands or families to form a core unit to be able to defend themselves and the, and the whole family. Great stuff. Well, thank you, ladies. So I think let's get going with this uh, discussion. Um, and I'm going to base this whole thing basically on the weaker sex theme because, uh, and, and this is my opinion. So if, if I do offend anybody, I apologize. Um, my opinion is that the fact that, that there's a statement that, that women, women are the weaker sex is actually influencing self-defense negatively in, in the sense that a, 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 a lady may now believe in her subconscious mind that she is the weaker sex, so there's nothing that she can do. And then pile on to that stuff that, uh, that you read on social media. You know, the law is against us and everybody wants to kill us and disarm us and we can do nothing. So, so just to open the discussion, and, and this is just an open question, anybody, anybody can ask that. And please, this is now obviously related to self-defense. You all are instructors in your own right, shooters, um, uh, unarmed uh, fighters, grapplers, stabbers and slicers, and all the stuff that's out there to do with self-defense. Um, what is your take on, on this weaker sex theme with regards to self-defense? Anybody can go. Um, well, Dion, I think, and for any ladies listening out there, I think the idea of the weaker sex, I think one needs to look at it from perhaps three dimensions. Firstly, physically. Secondly, mentally. And thirdly, in terms of skill set. Physically, yes. There could be some individual ladies that are bigger and stronger than some individual men. But as a general rule, women are physically weaker than men. That's the reality of it. Um, however, having said that, um, that's not all that counts in terms of self-defense. Mentally, I think women have incredible intuition that they should listen to. And I also think that women are incredibly courageous. I mean, if you think about it, let's just... Just look at nature for a moment. Never put, never stand between a mother and her cubs in nature. It's the same thing in terms of human beings. And um, so I think mentally women have the capacity to defend themselves on an equal footing to men. And then thirdly, from a skill set point of view, I think that any woman listening to this, if you are thinking you are not capable of defending yourself, let me tell you, and I'm sure everyone on the panel will agree with me that you're wrong. Skill set uh, can be developed on an equal level to a man. Will your skill set alter? Well, yes. I mean, it, I, I'm five foot two. I'm not going to try and throw an elbow in the face of someone who's six foot two. I won't reach. So I will have to alter my defense strategy slightly, but it will have the same devastating effect as two men defending against each other. So um, ladies, from a skill set point of view, you're absolutely capable. And finally, the last point that I want to say is, I don't think that women realize that you have the responsibility to learn to defend yourself. As if you are, a, if you are married, and you, you are relying on your husband to defend you. You are supposed to be your husband's helpmeet. That means that the full onus of protecting the family does not rely solely on him. You are a partnership. And if you are a woman living alone, people need to realize you are your own first responder. And so therefore, every woman in this country and around the world, I believe, has a responsibility to learn to defend themselves. You are not the weaker sex from that point of view. Great stuff, thanks. Ladies, anyone else? I totally agree. Um, and I think it's really up to us to change the way ladies think. Uh, you know, when they think about self-defense, uh, and I stay away from the word self-defense because it conjures up an empty hand 
person against an empty hand person, and that's not real. When those people break into your home or when they <coughs> mug you, when they hijack you, they have a weapon or a tool. I don't like to call them weapons. Um, and so the moment you give, and I think the big thing that, that we need to do is give ladies context. You know, when, when and we just use a, a tool, for example, like a pen. And, and I say to a lady, can you take that pen and stick it into another human being? Of course, she's going to say no, because there's no context. But if we give her context and we say, okay, so let's imagine you're alone at home with your four-year-old daughter. Um, two guys kick the front door down and they're coming in to rape your four-year-old four daughter. <laughs> and I give you this pen, can you stick it into another human being? That context instantly changes that lady's mind. Um, and I think when we're teaching, and we'll, we'll put self-defense for today, um, when we teach people to keep themselves safe, I think if we give them the, the, the proper context, rather than working at it from the, from the tool that they're going to use or from the strategy that they're going to use, if we start with the context, I think it makes a big difference to the person once she's over that hump. Um, so I'll, what the other thing I'll often do is I'll go, if I can give you a tool that works 80% of the time, okay, that can't be taken away. So now then, then you have to take away the myths. So what are the myths? Because Dion, you mentioned busting myths. Um, a guy will often say, well, I can't give you a knife because he'll take it away from you. Uh, I can't give you a gun because he'll take it away from you and use it against you. And often when you talk to ladies and you go, well, what about pepper spray? No, 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 they'll take it away and use it against me. So if I can give you a tool that they can't take away, no matter what, they can't take it away from you, okay? That works 80% of the time and is non-lethal, will you use it? And so I use that context to get them over that little hump. And it's really simple. The, the most important self-defense tool is your voice. You know, and it's one that we use so little. I know it sounds silly in this context, but once you get a, a lady over that, oh my God, I've got to use a gun. So we, I put them into the into the use of tools slowly and in an acceptable way by using context. So I don't think ladies are, I think once they get over that hump, they actually become a lot more vicious uh, than guys. Um, you know, I used to, I used to compete for a living. I used to fight for a living in the States. And it was very interesting to see two women when there's $5,000 prize money, they turn into total hooligans. Okay, and they just want to kill one another. Whereas the guys will fight to win and then they'll shake hands afterwards. The women are like mortal enemies forever. So we have it in us. We just, as women instructors, have to find a way to get that, that and as you said, Ivana, um, that um, animal instinct to come to the forefront and still be a lady. So, you know, that's my opinion. Mm. Yes. Yes, I think we need to deep program some of the gender stereotypes that is attached to self-defense, defense, shooting and guns, because the ladies think, oh my goodness, I'm going to be so, you know, manly running around with my knife and my guns and this and that. No, definitely not. We've got the maternal instincts to fight like Kelly said, like hooligans, when it comes to our children, when it comes to our loved ones, we just need to install that. And with that, it comes with mastering your techniques, getting that confidence in knowing what you do with what, if it's a pen, if it's your fingers, if, if it's a gun, if it's a knife, you know, we become formidable opponents and, and we are definitely not the weaker sex. We've got a higher pain threshold, I also think. Um, because I mean, if we get the flu, we just continue. If the man gets a flu, oh gosh, I'm dying. You know, I'm, I'm sorry, but sometimes I, I do perceive it that way. So yes, it's a derogatory term that we are mentally weak. We are not. But we need the right tools, the right techniques and master those things. And it has to be 
become part of you, especially in our situation that we are in here in this country. It has to be part of you. So that's just my uh, point on the weaker sex thing. You. Thank you. Anybody else want in? Happiness. Uh, I think everything has been said pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Right, Kelly, Kelly mentioned something, yeah, and, and, and I think let's just, let's just push that a bit. Um, she was talking about the 5,000 rand prize money. Um, dollars. Uh, yeah, well, sorry, dollars. $5,000, <laughs> which is about 70 it's million difference. South African rands now. 100 million rand. <laughs> soon to be, soon to be. Um, so you know, it makes me think of that where there's a will, there's a way, or if, if the prize is big enough, I'll go for it. So one of the things that, that, that gets me, um, I, I look at, I look at uh, courses being presented by instructors all over South Africa and I see, you know, okay, maybe, maybe because of safety or whatever, but, but I see six people in attendance and nine people in attendance and, you know, maybe 11 people in attendance. Uh, I'm not talking about structured classes like like your weekly uh, BJJ classes or Krav Maga. Stuff. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a specific course. On Saturday, we're doing a, a, a shooting fundamentals course. And, and we struggle to get nine people to attend that. Whereas, in, in my opinion, and, and what, would you, what would you say on that point? My opinion is that the prize in South Africa is, is way bigger than 5,000 US dollars. Everybody should attend a course like that and should keep on attending courses like that. It's as if people have got this ostrich thing, you know, where it's not going to happen to me. I don't want to think about it. What's your take on that? How do, we, how do we get the public to be aware of how real this prize actually is? Okay, so my opinion on that is, it used to really bother me, you know, when you when you talk about personal safety or self-defense or whatever, their eyes glaze over, and as you say, it's never going to happen to them. I've kind of stepped back and said, okay, well, it's never going to happen to you, so don't worry about it. But the people that it does happen to, or the people who has it happened to a loved one, all of a sudden catches a, a wake-up, and I think... I rather focus on those people, the people, even if there's six in a course. Um, as Doreen said, if I save one life, it's worth it. It's frustrating. It used to be frustrating. Now I don't care. And when I see people getting mugged and hijacked and home invasion and raped and it's stupid people must feel, stupid people must die. Stupid, you know, I know it's not the, a nice thing to say, but that's really the way I feel now. Stupid people, it, it's just dumb to think that it's not going to happen to you in South Africa. I don't know one person who hasn't had some kind of attack or attempted attack on them. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they either flee the country. Well, news for you, it's getting worse everywhere. So, you know, unless you find some little island on your own, uh, people are going to have to do it. I think as responsible adults, I think we need to forget about the stupid people and we need to focus on the children. Um, we, we should start talking about children about in, in non-frightening ways, teaching them about safety. So I don't want to take over the whole discussion, but uh, I really think that we need to focus more on the younger people. Don't worry about the stupid people. Okay, the people that come around, those are the people that we welcome into our courses um, and, and focus on the young people. Mm -hmm. Elmarie, you, you also work more on, on the, um, uh, what is it in, in English, uh, in the rural, rural uh, yes. South Africa. So, so you yes. work with uh, a more of a farming community. What, 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 do you see a change there? Are there more ladies coming on board? Or, or do we still have that thing where the men go out on patrol and the women stay home and, you know, just stay home? Beyond, yes, unfortunately we do. We have the same mentality all over. It will not happen to me is the, is the main mentality. It will not mm -hmm. happen to me. I'll be okay. 
Um, it's not here yet. Um, my husband is here. He'll be able to, to defend us. The same mentality, and it's difficult for us to change that mentality. I cannot tell somebody that you have to come attend the class. Well, I can even give it away for free. They're not coming. Mm. So it's a mindset thing. If, mm. you, if you have the mindset, your mind has been changed, you see what you are supposed to see, then they'll come. If it's one, two, or three, it doesn't matter. It's never because it's because it's not everybody that has the mentality. They haven't seen the light yet, so um, I, cannot, I cannot make them see what they're supposed to do. So it's all over the same. Um, they're always too busy, busy with life. I get that. We all have life to, to be busy with, but, but still, it hasn't changed yet. Um, we'll keep on working, keep on fighting the good fight, but yes, and like Ellie said, more change the focus more to our younger people. I agree with that wholeheartedly. They are, they are suffering at the moment um, with everything they're living through everything they're experiencing, and we need to teach them as well how to survive, how to win, how to get through alive, um, everything that's, that's on their plate these days. It's not just mm -hmm. the, 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 the um, adults, children as well. Yeah, I think Ivana uh, in, in the beginning mentioned that, that every, you know, everybody, uh, she specifically said ladies, but I think everybody has the, the uh, responsibility to to do something to be able to to defend yourself uh, if that's the correct term you know to, to safeguard yourself and your family against uh, uh, an, an, an attack or attacks that that will be coming uh, sorry anybody else in that point um, if I may yes. just chip in a little I think that um, how does one change the perception of people? Yes, I think we all agree that there is a resistance to taking self-defense classes. And I think that certainly from, I can only speak from my own experience, but the idea that it's not going to happen to me is actually sometimes fueled by something else beneath even that layer. And that is a concern that they won't be able to defend themselves. So that then we hide behind the idea of, well, it's not going to happen to me. It's when people don't want to face a reality, the ostrich syndrome. But I think one needs to look below the layer of, it's not going to happen to me. And I think, Dion, just the very kind of discussion that we're ho hosting today is extremely important. Because when people, I think people, I have a perception of self-defense as being really tough people who are all ex-military, paramilitary, and, you know, that, that's the kind of environment. Um, or timid ladies who are going to stamp on someone's foot with their stiletto. I think that's kind of the perception. Um, I believe that uh, altering that perception comes from communicating to the general public and showing them real people like ourselves ordinary people who have acquired the skill and have benefited enormously from doing so at so many levels. I think it needs to be a message of encouragement rather than one of uh, you're going to be a victim of crime and you better gear up for that. Uh, there are so many other positive um, spin-offs from learning to defend yourself and you might very well never be a victim of crime, but learn to defend yourself will equip you and will change you with a confidence, a steadiness that you've never had before. So I believe it's a message of, of hope and a message of encouragement that will help to alter people's mindsets. Thank you. Doreen? No, I definitely agree with that. And we need, you know, this what you've got together now, Dion, to get more ladies getting more ladies to, to come into the firearm thing, the self-defense thing, the instructing thing. It's exposure that we need, you know, because me as a woman, I would rather be trained or, or talk to another woman about self-defense or about how to handle my gun or how to handle myself in a situation than it would be from, the, from my husband or another man or, or you know, the guys you talked about in the beginning, don't mess with me. I was in the army 
I'll show you, you know, um, you know, it's a different approach that we need to get with the ladies and you will not lose your femininity. You will gain that confidence. You will feel empowered. You will think, heck yes, I can defend my family. I can stand strong. It's, it's all in the mindset that we need to change. But the problem at the stage, like Kelly said, you know, are you stupid? Don't you see what's going on around you? Just get knowledgeable and, you know, it, it we'll take it from there. But we need to get the ladies to be exposed to this and say, come on, girls, get together. Do you think you are strong? I think that's, that's you hit it on the head. One of the things about a lady instructor is she simplifies it rather than starts from this big uh, scary part. You know, we, we start with it very simply when we, when we teach other ladies because we were there. You know, we were in that scared, like, oh my goodness, what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. So we introduce it a lot uh, smoother and a lot more gently. And that's really good for a good way to get ladies into personal safety, into keeping themselves safe. Um, ladies, I love this. This thing is flowing like, like nothing. I love it. So please, if you've got something to say, you must jump in, please. Okay. Because I'm running at the rate of 600 miles per hour. So you're just writing down stuff. I think Ivana has, has mentioned... Also, the, sorry, oh, sorry. Yeah, if I can... If I can chip in there. Um, I think a lot of it also has to do with um, the company we keep. Um, I, I see it in my life experience that once we get older, not, but, you know, we started to get married, we started to have kids, we started to, you know, your whole focus... I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but your whole focus change and your whole company change and what you speak about and what you think about and what you talk about changes. And I find it incredibly beneficial to actually do the handgun courses and to be part of, of, of men groups, you know, doing these things because I get intel on other things that I never knew. Um, and it's not because we are, we are dumb or we don't know what's going on, but it's just different perspectives. And sometimes that can also help you to, to wake up and to see, but listen, like Ivana says, it's my responsibility. It's not my husband's or when you're very young, it's not only your dad's, you know, everybody needs to participate, but they have to have the sense um, to do it. And that's why I say it's the company we keep. If we can do more of these type of things, mm -hmm. speaking from a woman's perspective, giving tidbits of information out to the other women out there, which might be unaware of these things or not just see it or be so confined in their own world, mm -hmm. then, then, you know, then we can help other people also to, to grow and to become part of it. And that's why I like being, being part of a female structure because we can, we can take people and we can, we can develop them and we can, we can teach them different stuff and different things and where they go from there. I mean, it can be incredible. And also I would like to just say is we are not only, um, my camera is giving me trouble here. Yeah? No, that's it's fine. going on and off the whole time. We're still hearing but, you. Um, but also, <laughs> we, need to, we need to change, I would say, from self-defense to maybe start and use the term attacking. Because we don't only want to, to defend, but we need to start attacking in order to get these people away from, from our family and, and your life and, and all of those. So I would like to challenge everyone to, to change the term self-defense to maybe self-preservation or attacking or, I don't know, ladies, give us some terms that we can, we can start working with. Um, as Almri also said, it's a mind thing. Um, you know, change the way you see it and change the way you speak 
your mind in the world out there and then maybe we can encourage the ladies to come forward and to do this and to stick their nose in because once they are over that one line then they will come i know they will come i think i think you're very right there um so about 15 years ago when i started the company i coined the term personal safety for self-defense okay and if you, it, it's, be, it's almost become mainstream. Uh, there's a lot of people searching for the term personal safety. I think from a lady's perspective, it's not as scary as self-defense. So that's one of the reasons I use it. Um, so I think you, you've hit it on the head, uh, Thelmarie. If we, and, and it doesn't have to be personal safety. It's whatever your term is for it. But if we get away from the term self-defense, and I use it, just so that, you know, if I, if I say it's personal safety, some people go, well, I don't know what that means. If I go, well, it's kind of like self-defense, but not really. Um, it helps. So I think if we can come up with our own speech around self-defense, uh, that's not scary, that doesn't bring the, you know, let's fight hand to hand and punch one another in the face thing uh, to mind. I think that really goes a long way. Um, right. Uh, I, I just want to put a pause there, if you don't mind. I, I think definitely one of the things we need to do is get this discussion on a next level, um, a week or three later on, uh, where we maybe discuss what Thalmri has now been saying. Um, when, when, when I teach people, I always talk about the mindset, you know, where do you meet the threat? Do, do you meet the threat once he's already hurt you or do you start meeting the threat once it becomes imminent that he's going to hurt you? And I think that's, that's most probably part of what Thelmi wants to say. And I think we need to discuss that further later on. For now, I think um, we, we started off with the weaker sex theme and, and I'm sure by now anybody who's watching it and any lady who's watching it will, will agree that when it comes to... Um, what 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 am I going to say, Kelly? Can I <laughs> self defense? No, I'm not. I'm not allowed to say self defense anymore. <laughs> you can say self defense. <laughs> when, when, when it comes to defending yourself and your family and your loved ones and your property, um, I don't think the the weaker sex should stand in the way, or the weaker sex mindset should stand in the way of anybody wanting to do that, as as you all obviously are proof of. Um, all right, now that we've got, I think we've got a basis laid out of that, I want to, I want to step it up to the next level. Because as Kelly now stated, you know, when, when you talk self-preservation, self-defense, whatever, this comes to mind. But I, I personally have, a, have an issue with, with this thing. And, and I mean, I'm a, I'm a martial artist for, for many years and I've been in, in many martial arts uh, tournaments and so forth. And, and, and I understand contact fighting and empty hand fighting, but would you, what would you say, how important, and I'm calling it weapons, we can call it a tool, we can call it whatever, how important is the role of not empty hands in defending critical. yourself? I think Absolutely it's critical. It's a big equalizer. Yeah. Hmm. Force multiplier. Yeah. <laughs> okay, there's it in one shot. Yeah. Boom. There you've got it. So if yeah. you're viewing this and you don't get that, that's the point you must understand because that's how important it is. All right. That's how important it is. Um another I think culture. It's important. Yes, go. go. I think it's important for people to realize that um a weapon, a knife, a gun is not going to save you. If I put it, and that might sound like a contentious comment to make, but I'm going to qualify what I say. If I put a knife on the floor, it's not going to jump up and save you in a context of a situation. At the end of the day, a weapon is an extension of you. And when I say an extension of you, I mean an extension of you at several different levels. So for example, the first level would be mentally. Yes, we all you know, subscribe to the idea that you have to have the right mindset. So unless you are absolutely committed to using that weapon, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not going to save you. You need to have the right mindset mm -hmm. uh, towards it. 
Secondly, you need to know your weapon. Um, years ago, I used to teach rhythmic gymnastics. That's the kind of gymnastics that you use with a ball and a ribbon and a hoop. I don't know if you've ever seen anything like that. But those gymnasts live, eat, sleep their apparatus. So they will roll a ball from one arm to the other, throw, double roll, catch. That piece of apparatus becomes part of them. And I think that when you are thinking of weapons as being critical, yes, they're critical, but they have to become an extension of you need to know it. You need to know how to use it. You need to know how your attacker is likely to use it. And the argument that men often have with women is, oh, he's going to take it away from you. And that's a valid point, because if you don't know how to handle that, that weapon, you do stand the chance of him, uh, your attacker taking the weapon from you. So weapon retention is just as important. So yes, having, um, as you said, um, it's, the, it's, the, it's a force multiplier, it's the great equalizer. Um, yes, that's true. But, but with a caveat that you do need to know how to work with it and be really proficient with it. Okay, I'll, I'll get back to that point because I think that's what I want to conclude this whole thing with because that's important. Uh, for now, if, if we can just dabble around with, with the tool itself, you know, because I mean, there's so many stuff, there's tactical pens and this is actually a marketing opportunity for me. Buy it now and if you're only with, you know, blah, blah. Um, I'm not going to do that. But I mean, there's pens and tactical pens and knives and pepper sprays and all kinds of stuff out there in the market and firearms and so forth. So I, I just want to discuss, uh, um, is, is one better than the other? Is, is, what, what, would you, what would your take be on tools as such? I think that, um, and that's a very important thing. Uh, uh, one of the reasons I call them tools is because a weapon is not really a weapon on its own. You really turn it into the weapon. But, I think everybody's comfortable with something different. And so what I like to do is I like to give them an overview of all the tools. I, I divide it into five different categories. So first category is you, okay, which is, I think last resort is a physical interaction with hands and feet um, because you, you're giving up some uh, opportunities that you have, advantages if you have some kind of a tool. Um, and then the next one is non-lethals. So stuff like pepper spray, flashlight, blah, blah, blah. And I explain the pros and cons, how each one works. And then we go to blunt. So blunt, obviously, uh, like a baseball bat or a tactical baton or whatever. And I put them into groups because they're easy to understand. Um, and then sharps, so obviously pins, screwdrivers, scissors. Uh, and there's, every tool has got a limited thing that you can do with it. You know, with a, with a sharp tool, you can either stab or slash. And so once you narrow it down to the simplest form, it makes, especially ladies who instantly go, oh, yeah, I can cut a steak. You know, so I can slash. Um, Everybody knows how to stab. We've seen, you know, what they do on the Cape Flats. And then the fire armor, you know. Uh, so once, or, or let's call it a projectile tool. So that can be a bone arrow, a spear gun, a fire, you know, fire arm, something that flow, flies through the air. And I think the best tool is the one that you have when you need it. But that is relying on luck. I think really before the tool, I think we need to think about the strategy uh, and that is having the tool with you when you need it. And I don't think you should think about one tool. There's no law that says, or no rule in self-defense that you can only have one tool. I think the more tool options you have when you get into this, you know, confrontation, what violent confrontation, whatever it is, the tool that you choose in the moment will depend on the type of attack. So, for example, if it's a group of kids that attack me with rocks, I'm not going to take my gun out and shoot them. I'm going to use my pepper spray or my whip. Uh, you know, one of those little black whips that you buy at the, at the... So, I think your choice of tool, the more you understand the basic use of the tools, and not just one tool, okay, because one tool doesn't solve all your problems. 
And I think, so I really think that personal safety is more a strategy than learning techniques. Mm. If we focus less on technique and more on strategy, on a safety strategy, and the strategies, one of the things I found that prevent people from learning self-defense is that there are too many things that could, could possibly happen. Okay, so you could be mugged, you could be raped, you could be blah, blah, blah. But that's not really true. On a day-to-day -day basis, every one of us do some very specific things. So I don't shop, for example. Okay, so getting mugged in a shopping center is not, not one of my dangers. Um, I'm much more likely to get hijacked. Or So we need to identify where our risk area is ours personally and then we need to formulate a strategy and then we need to look at the tool we need to fill that strategy does that make sense yes. maybe i'm just waffling no, no 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 i get what you're saying i get what you're saying so it makes it easier for especially females to choose a tool if they work it backwards rather than go okay i've got a gun now how am i going to shoot someone um so, so I try and work it from the other non-scary way. And so I get ladies that, you know, have a baking day that will come and do a personal safety day with me and they'll play with all the tools and some will go, wow, I really love the pepper spray and I'm, you know, I want a pepper spray and a tactical baton and others will go, no, no, firearms the one for me. So I, I think as instructors, the more options we can give, the ladies in a in a friendly, non-frightening, non <clears throat> way. Uh, I think that's the way to get ladies to learn to protect themselves. Mm. Um, if I can just uh, also just comment that weapons are effective at different ranges. Mm -hmm. So um, if you have a knife and someone's standing, in, you know five meters away with a firearm, it's not going to help. Um, I think that it's very important for, for women to understand that, um, and anyone watching the program actually, that weapons are effective at different ranges. So do you have to be limited to just one weapon? And secondly, I agree with what you're saying 100%, uh, Kelly, in that if the weapon is not on you, then you might as well not have it. You might as well not carry it. <laughs> which brings me back to my initial point that I made earlier, is that that could happen. We all say, oh, you know, you've got to carry the weapon all the time. But life happens and it's very, very possible that an attack can happen when the weapon is not on you. That is when you need to be able to take anything in your environment and turn it into a weapon, which comes back to mindset and the desire to live the willingness to fight back with whatever you have around you. So, um, you know, but in terms of which is the best weapon, it's such a matter of personal preference. Mm. Uh, but having said that, one has to realize that certain weapons are more effective at different ranges. I think that's an important thing. And and to, to say to ladies, well, or to anyone, you, you know, you're either going to carry a gun or a knife. Well, why not both? You know, you, you're not limited to just one weapon. Um, but the biggest weapon, of course, is the mind. Mm. Definitely. It, it comes down to you are the weapon. All these other things are just tools. But I agree with Kili and with Ivana that we need a whole range. You know, you have to have that um, mindset and the uh, situational awareness that if you walk into the house and your gun might not be on you or you do not have a knife on you, but you sense something is wrong. You know, oh my goodness, but, but here I have uh, a, a dough roller or, or my knife is there. How can I use that? So we need to teach the ladies, we are the weapons, but you have to adapt to different scenarios to see what you can use, what you have at hand. Like Kelly said, our voices, we never tend to use our voices. But that is also a powerful tool. And I have seen from one of Kelly's classes, it, it's scary, you know, if you really start screaming. So these are the things that we need to teach the ladies, not just the guns, the knives, this or that, but anything that is 
at hand. And that is where the mindset comes in, that defensive mindset. I have to, I really have to, and I need to defend my family, my child, myself. Okay. Uh, the next the next point, uh, and after that, I think I've got two questions left. So we're almost drawing to a close here, but um, what I pick up here and what I've picked up over the years is men tend to have a false sense of confidence. I think there was a survey done that says 87% of men think they can, they are able to defend themselves. Okay, just out of starting from zero scratch. And I, I doubt that's an issue with, 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 with women. Um, and, and I think that gives women a much bigger advantage than, than it does men. Because one of the first things in fighting somebody is actually knowing your own strengths and weaknesses. So if I'm overconfident in what I can do and now I start taking somebody on, then I'm going to get knocked on the teeth. So I just want to make that point. So now we've discussed weapons and before we get to, before we get to the firearm discussion, I want to get to that one as well. But before we get there, and I want an input from everybody, please. Um, Men are equipment junkies. You know, we carry torches and swords on our backs and knives in the boots. And I don't know if I look at if I look at the groups on Facebook, then there's guys carrying such a lot of shit with them that I can't believe that they do. Um, whereas I doubt women are the same. But you, as ladies. First of all, do you everyday carry, and just I want to say the words out because not everybody knows the term EDC. Do you everyday carry? Do you EDC? And if so, what is it that you carry? Because obviously I wear different clothes than you and I've got more pockets and belts and whatever which you may not have. So if, if everybody can just give me some input there so we can give out to our audience that it is possible to carry some or maybe even more items. So let's start with Ivana, if you don't, I'm just following my screen as it sits up here. Okay. <laughs> um, interestingly enough, I, although I'm a firearms instructor, I don't carry a gun. Um, I actually carry a knife. Um, I don't just carry a knife. I, I have multiple weapons around me, especially in the car. I have uh, files, um, I, you know, go to builders warehouse and stand in front of the, the tool section and find anything that you, you know, is useful. Um, I think at the end of the day, uh, what you carry and um, the EDC that you carry has got to work for you and your environment. For me, it doesn't work for me to carry a firearm. Uh, it works for me to carry a knife. And, and, um, and that knife has actually saved me already a, a couple of times. So I think that, um, yeah, uh, basically you, you need to decide what you want to every day carry. For me, it's a knife. Doreen? Um, I carry every day. I have a Glock 43, which is a small um, concealable, very good concealable little um, handgun. And I do carry a knife and an extra mag because the Glock 43 has only a certain capacity. And, you know, if you get into a situation, please, not like a 38 special, oh, yeah, those after five rounds or after two shots, everyone's going to run. No, they won't. So that's why I carry an extra mag as well. The Glock 43, I've got it here. I am carrying as we speak. This is empty. Just, just lift it up again, if you don't mind. So you can just get a nice there shot we go. there. All right, thank you. Yes, good. And um, it needs for the ladies to be able to carry, it needs to stay comfortable because otherwise you get to the stage with, ugh, I don't want to wear this. I'd rather keep it in the safe. So I have various holsters and various ways of carrying. If I wear a dress, I wear a certain holster. If I wear tight fitting things, if I go job, there are certain holsters and there are very good holsters on the market. But for my everyday carry, I like the firm Kydex holster. I know I'm safe. I know I can't get like an AD into a femoral artery or something like that. So that's what I carry. So, so just uh, on that point, you do have different holsters for different uh, clothing uh, outfits. Yes, I, yes, I do. I can just show you, this is my holster that I do for everyday carry. It really is a Kydex holster and it's very firm, very sturdy. Okay, go to speed, I'll be back. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. 
Right, thank you. Elmerie? Young, yes, I carry every day carry a Glock 19 with two extra mags and a fixed blade and a gewone knip mes. Uh, we use it a lot. Um, rounds capacity is very important these days. We all know uh, we will not be able to uh, groups, groups of people or thugs or whatever you want to call them. They don't come at the rate of one anymore. It's more than one, two, three, four, five. Take your pick. So capacity is very important these days for me anyway. In my opinion, capacity, uh, reliability of the gun. So you need you need more than one type of weapon. You need a uh, firearm, you need fixed blades, flip knives, call it what you want. But more than one option. One option is not enough. So have a gun, have extra rounds, have a knife, have some options available. <coughs> Thank you. Selmeri? I don't carry every day, um, not my personal anyway, but I do have some form of, of um, weapon on me. Um, it will either be a knife or it will be a tactical pen. Um, because of the work I do, I can't really carry. Um, but yeah, in my car, I've got a knife, I've got a pen, and if I drive for, I do carry. Um, if I go somewhere, I do carry. Um, so, yeah, it mostly depends on my day and where I am and what I'm going to do. Um, I also have different holsters for my weapon. I've got one that is a corset holster and another one that is um, on my belt. So, I do have various options. It just depends on where I am and what I'm going to do the day. Good. Kelly? Um, yes, I carry uh, all the time. Uh, and I think Thelma Ree hit it on the head. I, I think a lot about where I'm going. So again, it's about strategy. Okay. So I've got my firearm. I carry a Glock 19 and an extra mag or three, depending on, you know, where, if I'm going in the car, I'll, take an extra two or three mags, stick one in the door, one in the cubby, et cetera, et cetera. And so safety to me is about forming habits. Uh, and so, you know, I'll have the pepper spray. So what do I carry every day? My Glock, my knife, definitely. Um, my pepper spray, my tactical baton. Do I carry them all on me all the time? Well, they're probably in my bag. At least most of them are in my bag or on me or in my car or, you know, there's pepper spray in strategic places around the house. Um, so all of the tools are based on the strategy that we will use as a family, uh, if that makes sense. So, yes, I, I always carry my fire on. Obviously, if I fly... Um, and we fly a lot, we, we teach overseas a lot, so you can't take your firearm. Knife will go into check-in luggage, and I take my cheap ones because uh, they often get stolen out of your luggage. I've lost a couple of really expensive blades. Um, on the plane, I'll have pen or my famous pus pus. I don't know if you guys know what that is. Um, but... Uh, so always, always a tool, thinking about how I'll use it, when I'll use it. And I, and I think that's a lot of, a lot of something that, that ladies think about more often than guys. You know, if you ask a guy, uh, you know, what do you carry a gun for? Oh, no, I'll sort of just shoot him. A lady will go, if this happens, then I will shoot. So they've thought about it a lot more in detail um, yeah, so I love all the tools. They're all my favorites. <laughs> okay, which brings us to the, the last question, which, which I would like to discuss, if you don't mind. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll make a statement, and then I want to pass over to Doreen first, for a specific reason. Uh, and, and I'm assuming, Doreen, I'm just making an assumption, so you can tell me I'm talking shit, please. Okay. Uh, the old thing. Ladies, get yourself a 38 special. 
and you'll be sorted. All right. Why, why aren't anybody, you all mentioned weapons, but none of you are carrying 38 specials. Now, Doreen, I know uh, in, in, in your sport shooting career, you shoot, am I correct in saying you shoot some big guns there? Those, those are not Glock 43s or, or, or whatever. Okay. Uh, no. The old argument is bigger, better. What's, what, what's your take? So let's, I'm going to start with Doreen, if you don't mind. Well, in the sport shooting, I shoot in open division. So I've got a gun. It's a STI True Bore 38 Super. That's not nothing to do with the 38 Special. It's a gun like this. It, the magazines hold about 30 rounds, and it's got a scope. It's got a compensator. It, it, it is, it's just huge. Sorry about the dogs here. Whoa. Use Whoa. the dog for self-defense. <laughs> Can I need one guy? Um, but for self-defense, it, it's I cannot I cannot carry that. Uh, bigger is not better in an EDC situation. Um, that's why I carry either my Glock 19 or my Glock 43. Never ever a 38 special because it's only got a limited capacity. It's difficult to reload. It, it's a heck of a difficult gun to shoot accurately. Because there was a lady who was, last time, I think she was held up. She only had a 38 special. She shot her six or five or six rounds, and the guys were still coming for her. It, it, it's very, very difficult to handle. But if you have nothing else, please just use it. You know, once the, the rounds are gone, just throw it at someone. Hack it. Do whatever you want. But please, men, do not advise to get your wife a 38 special because, yeah, it's got less of an issue with the jamming. You can clear a, a, a jam. You know, you teach yourself with your semi-automatic modern pistol to clear the jams, to get the mags in and out. That it just doesn't make sense to use a 38 special. I'm sorry if someone has one like that. That's fine. No, I just <laughs> want to get that argument on the game. Elmery, what's, what's your take on... on, on firearms, pistols versus that uh, calibers and so forth. Dion, I think if your husband or boyfriend suggests that you get the 38 special, then I would suggest you both start seeing other men or something. It's just, just not something that should be happening these days. There's so many options, so many better things. Use it. We don't live in the dark ages anymore. Um, there's better calibers, better capacity, better looking guns, if you're looking for something that looks nice. And the options, the options is there. Use them. Don't go for 38 specials. Um, we see in the rural community a lot of the women, um, a, a large percentage of the women that we see, they use revolvers and they are very much afraid of it. They're not sure how, how it works, how to use it. And they also, a lot of people think that, yes, um, after you fire the first one uh, round, the first round or second round, everybody will scatter. It's not, it doesn't work like that. So you need capacity. You need a good caliber. Uh, you don't want to enrage them further. So if you go, there's a lot of people that use point two two for self-defense. Why? What do you want? Why do you want to do that? We know from experience that um, even one to six rounds does not do much to a body if they keep on coming. Uh, sometimes you need a lot more rounds than six or ten to stop a threat. So capacity is very, very important. And you need to be able to quickly reload to get to that, those, uh, that capacity. Um, rounds, important. Um, guns, there's many, many options. But you have to make sure, you have to make sure that it's a good reliable gun that it's got a good backup in south africa um because we you will need spare parts at some time um uh, so you have to be able to get it in south africa if you don't you're gonna put that firearm in a safe and it's gonna be there for about six months because before you get your replacement so make sure about that and yeah there's a lot of options but again if somebody suggests 38 special your run very far very far away <laughs> Ivana what's your take there um again if I don't carry but if I had to I would be carrying a Glock 19 um that's my weapon 
kind of choice. And at the end of the day, you know, I think, again, the mentality that says to a lady, you need to carry a 38 special. Perhaps I'm wrong about this and perhaps someone else wants to comment. But for me, it conjures up the image of a woman who never fires that firearm and would carry it, would hold it with shaking hands and try and shoot in a case of a dire situation. Ladies, if you're going to carry a firearm, you need to, apart from getting, you know, people say, well, I'm just going to get my proficiency and my, my competency and my license, and then I'm going to carry the gun. At the end of the day, if you're carrying a firearm, you need to be practicing with it on a regular basis. You need to shoot it on a regular basis. You need to know that firearm. And for me, the concept of, well, you're just going to have a 38 special implies that the lady is just going to have the gun, but she's never really going to shoot it and she's going to falteringly use it in the case of a self-defense situation. That's not the case at all. I think ladies, we're way past that. It's a case of finding a firearm that suits you. I don't think anyone can say to you, you need to get you know, a Glock 43 or a Glock 26 or a Glock 19 or any, or, or a SIG or any, I'm not specifically, you know, pushing Glock here at the moment, but um, at the end of the day, you need to go and feel which firearm feels comfortable for you and then realize that you're going to have to fire that gun on a regular basis. It becomes part of you. So yeah, I'm not a, not a fan of the 38 special idea at all. Kelly, over to you. I think it's a lucky like little backup gun. Um, and I think the guy that recommends it to his wife should be the one that's carrying it. Uh, I think that the lady should make a choice, an informed choice. I don't think that they sh she should listen to the recommendations. I think she should take them under consideration. She needs to fire the gun that she's going to be carrying or using. She needs to be very comfortable with it and she needs to understand the pros and cons of each one uh, that, she, that she tests, okay? And I think if she tests several, she will not pick a 38 special for herself because as everybody has said, it's a difficult firearm to, to, uh, to shoot accurately. It's not pleasant. Um, and once she's shot, uh, you know, I mean, the trigger pull even is difficult. Um, once she's shot a, a, a pistol that she likes, she's much more likely to carry it than having this 38 special foisted on her by somebody who thinks she's inferior, uh, an inferior shot. Um, and I find when I have ladies and gentlemen on courses that I do, I find that the ladies shoot much better than the gentlemen. Sorry, Dion. Um, in general, because they don't have these preconceived ideas uh, no and they have instruction, mm. uh, whereas guys don't. They listen with two brains and one doesn't work very well. And so they, they don't listen when you tell them to do something specific. Sorry. Hey, facts are facts. That's fine. <laughs> That's what I want you to say. I need the truth. God. I need the truth. We can't just pussyfoot around this thing. We must tell it like mm. it is. All right. So tell me, what's your take there? Absolutely. Sorry, the same as all of the ladies above. You go. Um, you know, I agree. You have to, you have to um, actually go out and shoot whatever firearm you are considering to buy. Um, if you if you don't shoot it, then how are you going to know if it's going to work for you or not? And then also, as we have said, look look at your situation, look at your environment that you move in, look at why are you going to use it, and then you make a decision. Don't don't just take it lightly because this is this is an investment for you. And if you're not going to be able to practice with it and to be comfortable with it and actually use it for your intended purpose, then why are you, why are you getting a gun? Why are you even, you know, why don't you just get a knife or something else or, you know, so I agree with everything that has been said. Um, small is not always better, but bigger is not always better. So find that middle way that is going to work for you. Hmm. Definitely. 
right. The only time that bigger is better if it looks like this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would disagree with that, but if you're talking about guns, yes. <laughs> but but you, you see, ladies, why we cannot carry our sports shooting guns. And also, I've shot about 40,000 rounds through this gun, which I must say I haven't done through my EDC. And it is just as important to put as many rounds through your EDC gun, that you get used to the gun, the way it feels, the way it recoils, everything else. So yes, training is important. It is whatever you're using, if it's a clock, if it's a knife, training is, is crucial. It, it is so important to just get comfortable, to know ah, it's there, you know how it feels, you know what it can do. And that's a really good point, mm. okay? I think that we underestimate the value of dry fire. Um, people think that they can only shoot their gun if they go to the shooting range. And I think that's absolutely rubbish. I think that you should be playing with your tool, okay, whichever tool it is. Uh, if it's your firearm, make sure you safely unload, obviously. Always safe direction when you unload and all of that stuff that we know. But in the beginning when I got my firearm, I used to sit in front of the TV, okay, obviously unloaded, and I used to pick a bad guy, and when that bad guy came on, I would shoot him. And it becomes part of you. And so when you have to use that tool, it just is there for you. When it's such a scary thing, you never carry it, and you never think about it, and you never use it, except once a year, uh, I think that in that case, there's so many people that have firearms that actually don't use them in that violent confrontation because they've not thought about when will I pull the trigger? When will I actually pull the trigger? Okay. And if you ask most people there to carry firearms, they give you this, oh, when my life's in danger. So what is the second when you decide when your life is in danger? So I think as as instructors we have a responsibility to actually think about that stuff with our with our clients let's call them with our students before the time because when you're in that violent confrontation and it's happening how does your mind go okay now's a good time to pull the trigger you don't you're in your fight or flight you're absolutely terrified your heart's beating your adrenaline's racing um, you have to think about it beforehand. So the more natural you feel with that tool, whether it's firearm, pepper spray, whatever, you know, whatever you have around you or think about using as a tool, you have to feel so natural with it that when the firearm comes out, it's just the decision's already made. So what yeah. you're doing is a natural part of it. It's like cooking. You know when to put the garlic in because you do it often. So if we can relate to, to ladies, I think in things that they do on a regular basis, like shopping, well, not me, but cooking, uh, changing diapers or whatever it is, that's exactly the same as personal safety. It's just something that we do. It's something that we plan. Cooking, you plan. You don't just go, mm, I wonder what I'm going to cook today. I think I'll make spaghetti bolognese and then go to the cupboard. No, you go, mm, tonight I'm making spaghetti. So you, go, you make sure that you have your tomato puree and your bay leaves and all of that stuff. And I think shoot, whether you shoot or whether you knife fight or whether you whatever, it's got to be just like that cooking, just like that thing that you do on a regular basis. It's not this big, scary thing. It just is part of what we have to do in the world today, not just South Africa. Through that. So, definitely the dry fire thing, especially from concealment with the clothes that you're wearing that day, just dry fire, how to get your shirt up, how to get to your tools, whether it's a gun or a knife or anything else. The dry fire part is very, very important. Mm. Right. Also, Fine. just one little yeah. comment is that, um, you know, I think many people will go to a shooting range, will stand on level ground and fire where they're ready to fire. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it doesn't go down like that. 
you could be kneeling, you could have been thrown to the ground, you, you don't know the environment that you're going to be in. And I think it's important to be able to handle that firearm in a combative sense. Uh, it, there could be a guy flying at you with a knife and we know that he'll cover seven to ten meters before you even draw your weapon. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I think the practice is, is so critical, is what I was saying earlier, that that firearm is an extension of you and that you learn to use it tactically. Uh, that's, that's the point really that I'm trying to make is that please ladies don't think well I'm just going to get my license I'm going to get my proficiency and then I'm going to be proficient. Proficient implies an advanced level of skill and the idea that you know you're going to shoot 10 rounds into a piece of paper and you now pronounced proficient I think is actually you know seriously dangerous thing you know to tell people at the end of the day it's and and also as what Doreen was saying um being able to draw based on your clothing being able to get to your firearm learning to get to it if you've been thrown to the ground learning to get to it if you're having to dodge a knife coming at you these are the things that are important it's not enough just to carry the gun and then assume that that firearm is going to save you Okay, thank you. Ladies, before I give you each uh, quick segment to just do a conclusion for us, um, I just want to I just want to make the following statement and then, then I'll hand over to each one of you to just give us a short, this is it, this is it for, for the audience out there. So if you have to do one thing, do this. All right, so, um, and then, then we'll end this, this panel discussion. Um, I think uh, I think now now that we come to the end of this, two things stand out for me. Number one is that obviously, ladies out there, um, anybody in your areas are, are welcome to contact you guys because um, you are walking examples of the testimony that this weaker sex thing is not is not true when it comes to self defence. So. Um, I think that's the first part for me is, is that myth is busted that we know that women have got the capacity to, to defend themselves. And, and I think anybody out there who's watching is welcome to contact uh, you guys uh, when they are in your region, uh, follow the pages and see what, what info is there and what courses you guys are presenting. Um, and then, and then second to that is, I definitely think we need to have a follow-up discussion on this one where we go into some deeper stuff um, like mindset. Uh, for me, for me, the older I get, the more important I realize the mindset behind this, you know, um, and, and, and what it entails. So I think we do actually need a discussion on that. So, yes, as a conclusion, so let's start with, with Kelly. Uh, what would you give as a as a goodbye to the people out there? Well, I I would start with strategy. What is your safety strategy for you and your family? Where are you? Have a look at your risk areas, and I would fill in from that side. So once you've decided what your your strategy is, and you have to com communicate with your with your family, you know your family's got to be part of your strategy. You can't be you can't go, okay, well, if this happens, I'm going to run there and do that and take my gun out and shoot someone and everybody else is going, oh, my God. You have to, you have to do it as a, as a team. Um, I think that's quite important. And whether you decide to use a firearm or a blade or a whatever, I think you need to feel very comfortable with it and you need to actually do it. Don't put it off. Times are changing, guys. You know, uh, <coughs> zombies are coming. Get your shit together and uh, and do it. You can do it, woman. Ladies, you can do it. <laughs> it's my zombie hunter, eh? There it is. <laughs> you know, my granddaughter, we, we, I think one of our biggest fears is being taken. And um, uh, we grew my granddaughter up. I know this is kind of a bit of a, a story, but just... Two years ago, somebody tried to take her. Two guys tried to actually take her, okay? And the thing that saved her was it was something that, a potential that we identified. 
and we came up with a strategy. She went exactly according to the strategy and she's perfect, perfectly safe. And so I think, think about it from a safety point of view rather than a, you know, let's learn this physical self-defense thing. I think you end up with that depending on what you come up with, with your strategy. So. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Tell me. Yes, I do like that. Um, you have to think about things um, every day, where you move, what you do. <clears throat> Be open. Be open to the things and have a look and actually take in on, on what is going on around you. But I also want to go deeper and maybe we can discuss this on a separate discussion. Um, I'm actually very upset about the Twitter video that went around um, of that lady that was jogging in the morning. And I don't know how many cops came and arrested her and threw her in the back of the van. And this morning when they, they were interviewed, but they don't even know why she was arrested. I mean, what is going on here? So I think we need to also change our way of thinking because we need to start thinking about what is what is happening now what is really happening now and we are going to have to start to talk about this you know talk, talk openly about this and stop hiding away um, because you're too scared to say anything because this is wrong what is going on here is wrong and I think we need to address it openly and um, so taking everything in consideration, it's not, not only where you go and, and what you do, but you need to start standing up and fight for your right, not only fight for your life, but you, you have to start and fight for your, your rights as a woman, as a person, as a mother, as, a, as everything, you know. So I would like to invite everyone that we can maybe have a discussion on this sometime in the near future. Um, I think it will help us, trainers, but it will, I hope it will also help other women out there, you know. I think the threat is becoming more real every day from more and more um, sides, and we need to use the noggin on what we do and how we do that. Thank you, mm. Elmeri. Elmeri, Elmeri, what yeah. is your last words? Um, I agree with the rest of the ladies. You, we have to get our plans together. Start planning, start training, start thinking about what's happening. Get your act together, wake up. If ever, if ever there was a time that we need to start reacting, it's now. Get everything in place, get your training. These, like Ivana also said, that weapon on the ground is not going to save your life. You have to get training, the correct training. And we have to, you have to, to know what's going on. We don't live in a closet. You have to make sure that you know what's happening in and around you, what is taking place and what is your role in, in evading that. Or we always say that um, uh, first prize is also always to avoid a confrontation. So first prize, avoidance, everything, everything has its place in a plan. We don't always have to or want to fight. If you don't have to fight, you don't want to fight. So if you can avoid a situation, that's always first prize. So we have to get our plans together, our acts together, and start training. Keep on training. Training strategy. Thank you. Doreen, what's your last words? Dion, I thank you so much for this opportunity. I hope we can, <clears throat> with this broadcast, just reach women and make them a bit more curious and get them started on their journey to to do the training we've got excellent trainers i mean in cape town look at keely and and, and her husband at multi-dimensional warriors <clears throat> i'm sorry <clears throat> in pretoria we've got trainers you know it's it's not there is not a a, a, a big value or a big rich uh, environment of trainers in this country we are there we are just like a phone call or a website away and, and we are all very passionate about what we do and to, to get the people into it, especially the ladies. Um, because uh, I get so tongue-tied about it. Let's get the women out there to, to realize <clears throat> they are their first 
own responders. They they need to be able to, you know, get get into the mindset of, um, you know, saving their families. And yeah, this is the excellent opportunity. I just hope we could get into more subjects as we go along. Thank you, Dion. Thank you so much. Ivana, the last word is yours then. Um, well, to anyone watching this video, if you are still listening to this conversation, thank you so much for listening to this point. Um, if you're already in self-defense, then I hope that something that you've heard today has been of some value. But if you're not, and if you're watching this as a lady, uh, and you are now convinced that you should actually start doing something, if you look at all of us on the panel, what do every single one of us have in common? Training. I never started off like that. Hey, whoa, Sorry. whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> um, just, just a little personal note from myself. I, I didn't start off in martial arts. Um, I, I danced six days a week. I painted my ballet shoes pink until I've had the fifth lot of intruders in my home. And the last time I was standing behind the bedroom door, holding a four kilogram pink dumbbell, wondering what I was going to do if the guy came through the door. I'd never swatted anything. I'm the person that saves the ant out of the bath. So um, at the end of the day, look at, uh, if you look at where I was then and where I am now, what made the difference? One thing only, a decision to train. And that is the critical thing. You, you might not be at a point right now where you can defend yourself, but understand that with a little bit of training and with the, with the um, mindset to practice, you can get to the point where you will be fully capable of doing that. Never doubt that. And one last thing, I just love the saying, uh, fate whispered to the warrior, you cannot withstand the storm. Mm -hmm. And the warrior whispered back, I am the storm. Excellent. Right. Ladies, from my side, I just want to thank you all for taking the time on this Saturday morning and uh, sitting down and chatting with me. I think a lot of a lot of info came out of this, and I think um, everybody watching will agree that the way forward is clear to us all. So I would I would love to take take up a, a second opportunity with you guys i will be in contact with that um keep on doing what you're doing please stay safe out there i highly respect the work that you guys do and uh, thank you so much for your time and effort all the best on your sides thank you thanks dion thank you thank you, thank you, thank you dion. Dion. thanks <laughs> stay safe <laughs> thank you.